Well, good evening. Good evening. Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Welcome to everybody to Mount Olivet United Methodist Church. Those that are here worshiping with us in person, those that are watching us online, good to have everybody with us, particularly if you are a visitor or a guest. It's good to see everybody here this evening. My name is Pastor Mark O'Neill. For those that I've not yet met uh, or are new to our church, good to have you with us. It's going to be a fun service, I think. Um, get to sing some hymns, get to hear the word proclaimed, to get to celebrate uh, the arrival. We've been on this Advent journey for the last four weeks. We get to celebrate the arrival of our Savior tonight, and it's a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. Just a few announcements to kind of get out of the way before we get on with it. Do remember that this Sunday we won't meet in person in the sanctuary. Uh, our district has given every church in the district a virtual service to use to allow every family to stay at home and spend a little more time together watching services online. It's a gift given to us by our district, and so we're going to take advantage of it. So do know that we won't meet in person in here this Sunday, the 26th of January. I'm sorry, December. Instead, the link is in your bulletin. Uh, it's loaded up on our Facebook page. I'll send an email out to everybody, so you should have access to get it. If you can't find it, let me know. I'll try to help you out as best I can on the 26th to get you where you need to be. When we come back in January, January 2nd, worship is at 11 o'clock in here each and every Sunday. Uh, Sunday school is going to start at 945. If you bought a poinsettia, uh, take it home with you tonight. They're here uh, up on the, in the sanctuary. They're outside. They're all over the place. If you bought one, uh, take one home with you. Or if you see a few lying around that need a good home, take those too uh, so we can get, get them out of the way. Uh, blood drive here on January 5th. All that information is also in the bulletin. And do know that the office is going to be closed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. But we're back open for business, as it were, on Thursday of next week. So having said all that, it's good to see everybody. One thing also, does everybody have one of these? All right, if you don't have one, grab one out of the baskets at either door, because it's going to come in handy as we get to the end of service. I promise you that. But friends, let us all now go to the Lord in prayer together. Holy One, we give thanks to you for your presence here among us. You are here with us in our thoughts, in our minds, in our hearts. With us in the laughter of a small child. But your presence is everywhere. We have been on this journey together as a community of faith for a number of weeks. Preparing our hearts and minds for your arrival. And so we are here. Father, we give thanks to you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, for this coming together, whether in person or virtually, of your beloved sons and daughters. We thank you for the blessings you bestow upon us, most especially the blessing of sending to us the Savior we all so desperately need, whose birth we celebrate this evening, but who comes to us, if we'll let him, each and every day of our lives. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tommy?
Thank you, Tommy. Friends, I want to invite you now to stand as you're able and join me for our call to worship. It's found on page 815 of our hymnal. We'll actually go over to page 816 as well. But we're going to start on page 815. Our call to worship this evening is Psalm 96, page 815. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless God's name. Proclaim God's salvation to the Declare the Lord's glory among the nations, the Lord's marvelous works among all the peoples. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The Lord has established the world. He shall never be The Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Amen. You may be seated. This time I'd like to invite Sarah and Rodney to come forward as they're going to light our Advent candles for us this evening. On this most holy night, we light all four candles in our Advent wreath, and we are reminded of the hope, love, joy, and peace. Of his coming. Now we light the Christ candle. We rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of the baby born in a manger. Let us pray. Gracious and mighty King, we celebrate your goodness to us as we join the triumph and joy of Christmas. As your love has been revealed in all of its fullness, we pray that love may abound in our hearts during this special day. Grant us the spirit of Christ that we may live in the fullness of his character every day. In his name we pray. Amen. Friends, I want to invite you to stand now as you're able as we sing our first hymn. It's found on page 240, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, page 240.
We all sound good tonight. Let's sing another one. Page 245, the first Noel, verses 1, 2, and 3. I want to invite you to remain standing just for a moment and turn to page 881. I'd like for us to, together in one voice on this night, make our affirmation of faith. State those things that we believe, those things we know to be true, those things that distinguish us from the rest of the world, those things as contained in our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight's scripture is Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when the, they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in the battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, 
to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord for us, the children of the Lord. My friends, as we come now to our time of prayer for and with one another, just a couple of gentle reminders. In every pew are these pew cards. If there is somebody that you wish this church to be in fervent prayer for, I encourage you to fill one of these cards out and put it in one of our two offering boxes once service has concluded. If it's something that is is sensitive, that is personal, that you would rather just be known between you and I, then I again encourage you to fill this card out, but just place this in my hand once the service has conducted or just like somebody did at the noon service, just drop it on my desk on your way out. We'll make sure that your prayer concerns are lifted up. Our prayer this evening is a responsive prayer. You'll hear me say, Lord, in your mercy. And if you feel so led, I invite you to respond by saying, hear our prayer. So again, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and you'll say, Friends, it's with joy and gratitude for the gift of Jesus. Let us now draw near to our Lord in prayer, asking for his mercy for our church, the world, and all who need his loving kindness. Friends, let us pray. Holy One, thank you for giving us your Son. In him we are bold to call you Abba, Father. Thank you for being God with us. Thank you for fleshing out your love, forgiveness, and peace in a way we can approach, touch, and believe in our trembling and death-shadowed hearts. Thank you for bringing us the light of eternity in this babe of Bethlehem. Mary's boy, your son, and our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Bless your church throughout the world. Make it a place where all may hear the angels' song and hasten to adore Jesus, their Lord and Savior. Shelter your persecuted church in your arms so they may gather to worship in peace and rise to serve you in joy. Lord, in your mercy. Bless our guests and visitors, especially those whose faith wavers and whose hearts are heavy. Give them a glimpse of the joys you have prepared for all who love you. Lord, in your mercy. Bless this congregation, its people and programs, its worship and service. Grace all we do with your strong, saving love. Help us to freely share Jesus today and always with those who do not know him and with all who need him most. Lord, in your mercy. Bless our country, this world, and all its people and creatures with peace and goodwill, with health and safety, with kindness and justice, with food for body and soul, and with love for you and one another. Lord, in your mercy. Bless everyone for whom this season of joy is dimmed by sorrow, pain, loneliness, and everything else that is inflicted by evil's power working through human hands or natural disaster. Come with healing in your wings, with tidings of great joy, and with light and life for all. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all who mourn with the certainty that you have opened heaven's doors to all who have died trusting in your promises. Bless us each day of our earthly pilgrimage with peace and mercy, reconciliation and joy. And lead us at length, we pray, to your bright courts of heaven and to your endless day. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for hearing our prayers, dear Lord. We entrust them and our very lives into your merciful care. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Well, friends, our sermon text this evening and our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke. We'll be in the second chapter. We're going to take a look at verses 1 through 20. So again, this is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. It says, In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace amongst those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Friends, this is the word of God for you and I, the children of God. Thanks be to God. I mentioned from up here a few weeks ago that our son Gray is running indoor track for the high school. That name is kind of a misnomer because there's nothing indoors about it. They certainly have all their practices outside. The first two meets have also been outside. The name is more to distinguish it from the track season that occurs in the spring. That's called outdoor track. Make no mistake, these indoor runners, they're very much outside running in the elements three times a week and on meet days from November through February. I chuckled a little bit when I got a look at his meet schedule because the first two meets, being outside and being during the wintertime, are called polar bear meets. I guess in anticipation of it being cold, windy, wintry weather. And so once we knew he was going to run, we scrambled to find toboggans and gloves and the kind of things we thought he would need to be able to run in cold weather. But they've actually been blessed. Both of the meets they've had so far have been on beautiful, sunny Saturdays where the temperatures got into the low to mid-70s. Beautiful days. Warm enough to trick your mind into thinking it's actually March and not December. And when you and I are presented with days like this that are warm and sunny with no need of a coat, no need of a pullover, no need of gloves or a toboggan, during this month of December... The phrase we typically say is what? It doesn't feel like Christmas. Many of us are out and about a little more than normal these last few weeks, as we typically are this kind of time of year. We're in and out of shops, in and out of grocery stores, bumping into friends and acquaintances, and I guarantee that just about every conversation you've had with somebody, whether it be on the sidewalk, walking downtown, in line at the Dollar General or the Piggly Wiggly, has included this phrase. Are you ready for Christmas? 
How many of you have said one or both of these phrases at one time or another these last few weeks? Thank you, fellas. You're being honest. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Nobody else has said these phrases? Raise your hand if you said these phrases the last two weeks. Right. You can raise your hands in church, friends. It's fine. <clears throat> but each of these phrases contains certain assumptions, don't they? When we talk about Christmas having a feel, particularly here in the greatest state in the country, we're talking about what? The weather. We're talking about cold. We're talking about wind. We're talking about maybe a little ice, maybe a little bit of snow. That's what Christmas feels like. For some of us, maybe Christmas feels like when you see Christmas lights on houses. Or maybe Christmas feels like when you hear Andy Williams or Nat King Cole or Burl Ives or Perry Como or Bing Crosby or the Ronnells on our radios or on our music streaming services. And when we talk about being ready for Christmas, what are we talking about? It means having completed buying all our gifts, right? And all those gifts are in boxes ready to be wrapped or they're put in bags. Party invitations have been sent out. Trees have been put up and decorated. Packages have all been shipped out. Or packages hopefully have all been received that we ordered from other places. Baked goods have been made and delivered. Menus have been decided upon. Travel plans have been made. And sleeping arrangements for our friends or family that's coming in have already been decided. And our Christmas cards have all been mailed. That's what it means to be ready for Christmas. Does all that sound about right? <coughs> What's missing? <coughs> I read an article this week that made reference to C.S. Lewis's book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Now, be honest, I've not read it, but, so I'm going with what this article said. But evidently, one of the main characters, a guy named Mr. Tumnus, says this, It is winter in Narnia and has been for a very long time, Always winter, but never Christmas. I thought about that phrase a lot this week. Always winter, but never Christmas. Friends, as you and I gather on this Christmas Eve, I want us to pause and think about whether we are more concerned with the feel and getting ready for winter than we are for acknowledging Christmas in our lives. Do we appreciate what it means to have the gift of Christmas? Or do we take it for granted? After all, it is the gift that is being spoken of by the angels in our reading this morning, isn't it? When the angel says, To you was born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, friends, that's Christmas. That statement is the most important statement that has ever been made in the history of the world. And that statement points to the most important event that has ever happened in the history of the world. But have you ever stopped to think what our world would be like without it? What would it look like if we were to live in a world that was always winter, but never Christmas? Actually, we don't have to think about it. Because the pages of Scripture tell us exactly what it looks like. And it illustrates it through a people called Israel throughout centuries of real human history. The prophet Isaiah that Chip read from earlier describes the state of the Israelites, themselves emblematic of the whole world, as a people walking in darkness, as a people dwelling in a land of deep darkness. And if we take a peek at Genesis chapter 6, we hear these words, The earth was filled with violence, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. This is a world without Christmas. An unbroken trajectory of brokenness. Always winter, but never Christmas. No Christmas means bless you. No Mary or Joseph. No shepherds or angels. Just an empty stable full of straw and animals. No Christmas means no God in human flesh. No Savior. No unto you, which means there's really nothing for you. No one living a perfect life for you. No one obeying the laws to commands on your behalf. No one healing disease and casting out demons. No one preaching the gospel and no Good Friday. No cross. No suffering. No death. No forgiveness. No resurrection. 
no life. Take away Christmas, take away Jesus' incarnation, and friends, there is nothing Christian left. There would be only our dwelling in a land of deep darkness, and the darkness would be of our own making. In other words, friends, yes, always winter, but never Christmas. And yet, you and I are here tonight, aren't we? Why is it that we are here? Because just like our young friend back here is showing us, God is light. In Him there is no darkness. And God's answer to our darkness is to be our light, for us the light of the world. For unto us and for us there is light, and that light is Christ. God always achieves redemption in the deepest darkness. In fact, if you and I look through the pages of Scripture, we see His work to shine light into the darkness is a biblical theme and pattern which prepares us, friends, to feel, get ready for, and recognize the miracle of Christmas. For example, God spoke the words, Let there be light into the darkness and void of creation, and it was so. God promised a rescue from the darkness of sin and death even after Adam's fall. God proclaimed that Abraham's offspring would deliver all nations as Father Abraham gazed at the immeasurable night sky. God led Israel out of captivity and bondage to slavery as they sat in darkness preparing and eating the Passover meal. God brought victory to Israel by twilight as Gideon's lamps filled the Midianites with fear and confusion. And tonight, friends, we read that God sent His angels to the shepherds as the light of glory pierced the shadows of Bethlehem's hillside. To repeat the scriptures you've heard so far tonight, Fear not, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. And you will find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Friends, that is Christmas. Christ's incarnation is the grand miracle of the Christian faith. The uncreated, eternal came into nature, into human nature, bringing nature up with it. The creator becomes the creature. The infinite takes up residence in the finite. The fullness of the deity dwells amongst us bodily. God and man are reconciled. The image of God is restored to man. The uncreated light comes to cast out the darkness of our sin. Which means, of course, even in this season of joy, we have to do the uncomfortable thing and call our sin what it is. It's darkness. The words of Isaiah I spoke about earlier are also about us because, friends, we sit in deep darkness. But remember, that's only half of the prophet's word. Friends, there's no need to sit in the darkness holding on to your sin anymore because unto you a child is born. Unto you a Savior is born. The darkness of winter swallowed up in the light of Christmas. Martin Luther once said that I know no other God than the one who hangs on the cross and nurses at the breast of his mother. This is the profound miracle of the Incarnation. No other world religion can make or dares to make this historical, monumental claim. God and man are one in the person of Jesus. God of the eternal Father, man of his virgin mother, Jesus brings God and man together as one unique person, a new Adam, a new head for humanity. Unto you, friends, is born a Savior. Jesus, then, if we're honest, is not the reason for the season. Your need of rescue is the reason for the unto you is born a Savior. 
Jesus was not born for himself. Jesus did not live for himself. He had no need to die for himself. He did all the unto you for you. Christ became man for you. Christ lived a perfect life for you. Christ paid the debt of your sins, suffered for you, and bled for you. Christ hung on the cross in darkness for you. Christ delivered you from the shadow of death by dying for you. All of God's nighttime rescues of old for Abraham, Israel, and Gideon all lead to the cross, all because Christ was born for you. Unto you was born a Savior who was Christ the Lord. Unto you is born the light of the world to scatter the darkness of your sin and death as far as the curse is found. Unto you is born the true fountain of life who baptizes you with living water and sacred blood all flowing from his pierced side. Unto you is born the one who speaks a word of absolution and forgiveness over your sins just as quickly and surely as he spoke creation into being. Unto you is born the word made flesh who gives his body and blood for you. This, friends, is the only gift that matters at Christmas. And it is yours to accept. This is the true celebration of Christmas. This is the true Christmas feel, where all we have to get ready is our hearts and minds to receive him, <coughs> to make space in our lives, where the Word made flesh continues to dwell among us. Because, friends, for those that are in Christ Jesus, it is always Christmas and never winter. It is always Christmas, never winter. That's a true story. So tonight, friends, what season are you in? Are you ready to receive Him? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> My friends, just as a reminder, if you happen to bring a tithe, gift, or offering to the church, that we do have offering boxes on either side of the sanctuary. In a minute, though, I want to say a prayer. In heartfelt, just appreciation of your continued faithful giving all throughout the year of 2021. The prayer also will be in anticipation of future givings in 2022, which is now just, what, seven days away, eight days away? My friends, let us now go to the Lord in prayer together. Holy God, as we gather this evening, all our attention is focused on a baby lying in a makeshift bed in an it-will-have-to-do stable. It's not lost on us that you sent your Son, our Savior, into the world among the poorest of the poor and told us this will be a sign to you. As we present gifts to you, we pray that they might reach those in the greatest need, that they might lift those in the deepest despair, and that they might bring peace and compassion to those who find themselves amidst conflict. We pray this in the name of that holy child, Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. stars are brightly shining it is the night of the dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope 
the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night divine oh night when Christ is born His gospel is peace. Chain shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord oh praise his name forever his power and glory the more proclaim his power and glory evermore proclaim celebrate Holy Communion together tonight. Our liturgy starts on page 12 of the hymnal, if you want to turn there at this moment. After we pray our prayer of confession together and hear the words of absolution and forgiveness, then we'll move over to page 14. But we'll start on, on page 12. Friends, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, I invite you to join me as we confess our sin before God and one another by praying the prayer of confession found on page 12. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. 
Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, proving just how much God loves each and every one of us. In the name of Christ Jesus, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Our liturgy then begins on page 14. And there will be a call and response pattern to what we're getting ready to do. But do remember, though, there's some stuff that I'm going to say that's not in your hymnal. So don't try to flip around and find it. What you have there are your prompts to let you know when it's about time for all of us to talk together. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. As your word became flesh, born of a woman, On that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, (coughs) this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. (coughs) When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and all these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, now as the forgiven and reconciled sons and daughters of the Most High God, I invite you to join me as we say together our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, you and I are many persons, but we make up one body, that being the body of Christ the body of a sinless man, broken and torn, 
so that we who are broken and torn can be made whole again. This cup over which we give thanks is the cup of salvation poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of all of our sins. For those who are assisting with communion, please come forward at this time. Here's how we're going to try it. We've got two stations here. And so this section, you guys will slide out toward the aisle, come get a napkin and a cup, and then swing back to your seat. But don't take it, right? We're going to do it all together as a family. All right? And then you guys are going to do the same thing, except you're going to come down this aisle, get your stuff, and go back around that way. All right? You guys will just be patient for a little bit. And then when they've all gone, then you'll pick whichever side that you want to go to. Now, remember, when you get back to your seat, this is the one that's got the wafer on one side and the juice on the other. Okay? So get your wafer out first. <laughs> all right? All right. Our table is open and welcome to anybody, anywhere, at any time. So as you feel led, friends, do come forward for Holy Communion.
Friends, I want to invite you now to stand as you're able and turn with me to page 217 of our hymnal, 217, as we sing together, Away in a Manger, page 217. Put your hymnals away. The words to Silent Night are in your bulletin on the page opposite of our liturgy. And here's what I'd like for us to try to do. So if you are sitting to the far side of your pew, and by far side I mean, I guess, where you're sitting all the way to the right, when we start singing, I want you to turn your candle on. And then you turn to your neighbor and you tap their candle. All right? And once your candle is tapped, then I want you to turn your candle on. And then turn to your neighbor and tap their candle. You kind of get what we're talking about here? You've done it before, yeah? Basically, you're, you're sharing the light of Christ with your neighbor, okay? And ideally, it shouldn't take long, but everybody's candle is going to be lit. And you can hold it up in the air if you want to hold it up in the air. You can hold it out like this. You can do whatever you want to do. You can spin it, I guess, if you want to spin it. That's fine. Whatever you want to do with it. Um, and we'll sing all the way through the words that are on the other side of the bulletin. And then we'll have a benediction and then, then we're done. All right, has everybody got it? Does anybody not know what we're doing? Fair enough, let's go.
friends, as we leave this place, my prayer for each of you is that it is always Christmas and never winter. That each of you finds a place to welcome in the Christ child. And that you feel the grace, love, mercy, joy, and hope that reigns over the darkness of this world. Merry Christmas, friends. Merry Christmas. We go in peace now to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Oh, that's right. Your way out. It's not a Christmas present. Hey. Huh?